Our world news tonight this Thursday. The states being flushed. The Americans facing a continual trial of name disasters in a period of just two months. Race to the White House. Six days to go for the presidential election and both candidates wins ahead. COVID, COVID and more COVID. Tighter restrictions, new safety measures and more lockdowns in Europe as cases spike. And new demands. PS5 could overtake Xbox Series 10 to be the most wanted console of the pandemic year. From Ada Verna News Headquarters in Colombo, this is World News. Reporting tonight from Studio 24, here's Mahesh Johnny. A very good evening everyone and thank you very much for joining me right here on World News and thank you very much for the privilege of your time. We start off today's coverage from the United States as Hurricane Zeta made landfall near Crocodile, Louisiana as a Category 2 storm. Tonight, Hurricane Zeta unprecedented and unrelenting. The Category 2 storm now lashing Louisiana, the strongest hurricane to ever hit the state this late in the season, with dangerous winds and torrential rain. Zeta is literally on our doorstep. Um, the weather is degrading quickly as we speak. New Orleans closing additional floodgates as the storm intensified. On the ground, a rush to get ready. Harold Smith lives outside the levees, his town under voluntary evacuation orders, but he is staying put. We've had five, six, seven named storms, and every one of them three days out had my address as the bullseye. In a historic storm season, New Orleans somehow spared till today. Hurricanes Laura and Delta both striking to the west while Hurricane Sally slid east. Zeta's path, however, now giving the city a direct hit. It's been the most challenging years yet. Well, time to get you the latest on the road to the White House. Both candidates were in Arizona and they were campaigning very hard in order to get the last vote in as over 65 million people have already cast their ballots. With less than a week of voting to go, President Donald Trump on Wednesday held two more in-person campaign rallies, both in Arizona despite a U.S. surge in COVID-19 cases and mounting criticism that he is prioritizing his re-election above the health of his supporters. The pandemic that has upended life across the country this year, killing more than 227,000 people, is roaring back in the days leading up to the November 3rd election, but Trump continued to insist otherwise. And a safe vaccine is coming very quickly. You're gonna have it momentarily that eradicates the virus, and we're rounding the turn regardless. Trump's running mate, Vice President Mike Pence, held his own rally in Wisconsin, where a record number of coronavirus cases and deaths has prompted the state's Democratic governor to urge people to stay home, to wear masks, and to cancel any gatherings with more than five people. A campaign official told necessary precautions were being taken at Pence's event. Well, hello, Wisconsin! Epidemiologists say rallies pose grave public health risks because people shout and chant while packed closely together, often without wearing masks. Trump's Democratic challenger, former Vice President Joe Biden, after a briefing from public health officials on Wednesday, slammed what he called the Trump administration's disregard for safety and failure to develop a plan to contain COVID-19. The Trump campaign said the problems were due to the unexpectedly large crowds. Trump plans to visit 10 states in the final days of the campaign and will host 11 rallies in the final 48 hours. Well, just as I mentioned earlier, more than a third of registered voters have already casted their ballots with just six days to go for the election. Let's get the very latest on that story. And for that, let's cross over to other than World News Special Correspondent Sharia Ekanaika from Rockville in the United States, uh, who's standing by with the latest. Sharia. Mahesh, close to 75 million people have already voted in the U.S. presidential election through early votes. The number of people who have voted early represents more than 53% of the turnout in the 2016 election. 
Biden holds a comfortable lead in the national polls, which also show a public increasingly dismayed by Trump's handling of the largest public health crisis in U.S. living memory. Polls in background states that might decide the election are tighter. Meanwhile, the U.S. stock markets took another hit today as coronavirus cases surged across the country and the hopes of a deal on a relief bill dwindled even further. The House Speaker Nancy Pelosi suggested last week the possibility of a breakthrough on an estimated $2 trillion deal. The Republican-controlled Senate has since adjourned until November 9. The House passed a $3.4 trillion bill called the HEROES Act in May, but Senate Republican and the White House dismissed it as overly costly. Back to you, Mahesh. All right, uh, other than a World News Special Correspondent, Sharia Kanaika reporting from Rockville in the United States. Well, uh, let's uh, cross over to Europe. The leader of Poland's ultra-conservative ruling party is refusing to back down, faced with a wave of anger across the country over abortion restrictions, and hence the protest continues in Poland. War. Klementyna Suchanow sprays the word on the tarmac as her fellow protesters shout shame at Poland's government. Since the Constitutional Court ruled that abortion should be banned even in cases of fetal abnormality bypassing Parliament, there's a feeling a line has been crossed. Protests and counter-protests are happening daily across Poland, including in front of churches. Though most Poles are Catholic, only a small minority support a total abortion ban. Maher joins other pro-lifers for weekly prayers outside this clinic. Hospitals without abortionists, says this anti-abortion van parked outside. It also says F off, a message from pro-choice protesters. Hospital staff aren't happy about the court ruling. If and when the ruling becomes law, medical personnel will face up to four years in prison for performing terminations for abnormality. Well, Azerbaijanians accused Armenians of killing 21 people and wounding dozens in a missile strike near the disputed region. The month-long conflict waging between Azerbaijan and Armenia saw each side accuse the other of killing civilians by shelling cities in and around the region of Nagorno-Karabakh on Wednesday. The fighting over the mountain enclave has defied three ceasefires now, and mediation by world powers including France, Russia and the United States. Azerbaijan said 14 people were killed when Armenian shells hit the town of Bada. Armenian-backed officials in Nagorno-Karabakh said Azeri shells had fallen on the enclave's two largest cities, killing one person. Both sides denied each other's claims. The worst fighting in the South Caucasus for nearly 30 years has raised fears of a wider war that could suck in Russia and Turkey, an ally of Azerbaijan. It also poses a threat to pipelines carrying oil and gas from Azerbaijan to world markets. Nagorno-Karabakh is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan but is populated and controlled by ethnic Armenians. Azerbaijan rejects any solution that would leave Armenians in control of the enclave, which it considers to be illegally occupied. Armenia regards the territory as part of its historic homeland and says the population there needs its protection. Many countries in Europe is going back into lockdown. We'll have the latest details right after this break. You're watching World News. everyone to World News. Well, as the COVID cases surge in Europe, France has just announced a second national lockdown. And for more details, let's cross over to other than World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaradhana, who's standing by in Paris, France. Chetana. Mahesh, French President Emmanuel Macron has announced a second national lockdown until at least the end of November. President Macron said that under the new measures, starting tomorrow, people would only be allowed to leave home for essential work or medical reasons and they would need to fill in a form to justify leaving their homes. As was required in the initial lockdown in March, 
social gatherings are banned. Non-essential business such as restaurants and bars will close, but schools and factories will remain open. COVID daily deaths in France are at the highest level since April. On Tuesday, 33,000 new cases were confirmed. President Macron said that the country risks being overwhelmed by a second wave that no doubt will be harder than the first. The curbs will apply until 1st December and will be reassessed every two weeks. The president said he retained hope that families will be able to reunite it for Christmas. Back to you, Mahesh. All right, Shetana Dharmaratna reporting from Paris in France. Other than a world news special correspondent, thank you. Well, not only France, but Germany also have imposed a four-week lockdown to curb the sharp rise in new COVID cases. In a video conference on Wednesday, Angela Merkel and Germany's 16 state governors unanimously agreed to implement a partial lockdown in the country. From Monday the 2nd of November until the end of the month, all restaurants, bars and leisure facilities, including theatres, cinemas, sports centres and swimming pools, will be closed. Gatherings will be limited to 10 people from two different households, while working from home is strongly recommended. The number of COVID-19 cases is rising rapidly, with 15,000 new infections in just 24 hours. Fears of another hit to Germany's already slowing economy are a major concern. In an effort to ease the economic situation, 40 billion euros is to be injected into the sector's hardest hit by the new restrictions. It appears, though, that it won't be enough to soothe the many Germans who are already strongly opposed to such measures. In two weeks' time, the German government will once again meet with the country's state governors to assess the situation and take further action if needs be. Well, still on the updates of COVID pandemic, the United Kingdom is only buying a vaccine to protect the people who are most vulnerable to COVID-19, with effectively in ending any hope of herd immunity in the foreseeable future. A COVID vaccine is seen as the great hope, protecting health, securing the economy, a ticket back to normality. But the UK is only buying doses for those who are most vulnerable. That's 30 million people, less than half the population. The vaccines task force has only bought doses on the assumption they'll be given to people over 50, those with underlying health problems and to health and care workers. But with so few vaccinated, there's little prospect of herd immunity. The virus will still spread. Some countries are rolling out the vaccine to everyone. Herd immunity is the explicit goal of Australia to stop the virus spreading. Japan is hoping to secure enough doses to protect its population by next summer. And Germany has also said it's aiming for herd immunity. But the UK is not alone in targeting the vaccine at those most at risk. Canada is drawing up a priority list for the first available doses of vaccine, and Belgium is doing the same. Ethics experts say governments need to be transparent about who gets the vaccine. The first one will be on your right, right arm. Kate Bingham, the UK's vaccine's chief and a volunteer in one of the clinical trials, told earlier this month that the first vaccines are likely to be only partially effective. They won't end the pandemic, but with luck, they'll stop so many people dying. Well, staying in Europe, Brussels is proposing to introduce a legal guarantee for a minimum wage in the European Union, but leave individual countries to determine how much it will be. A minimum wage for Europe. Not the same wage to fit all EU countries, but at least a legal guarantee that a worker from Bulgaria to Luxembourg can earn enough to live from. With that in mind, the European Commission presented their much-anticipated legally binding directive today. They would provide the calculations and EU member states would then set the wage, based of course on living costs, house prices and national GDP. Denmark and Sweden say no. They say it's not up to politicians to set the minimum wage. Sweden may not want this directive, but other countries need one. Otherwise, the most vulnerable workers will be exploited. That's how the European Trade Union Confederation feel. They say the best takeaway from this proposal is that collective bargaining would also become the norm in countries in the East. But for those dramatic changes, member states would have to sign up. Esther Lynch hopes they do fast. She says this instrument could be the only way to tackle exploitation in Europe. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown that those on the front line who work the most often earn the least. 
so EU member states might now feel a greater sense of urgency to prioritise their needs. to World News, a battle of the consoles is always a big one and this will no doubt remain the same for the next generation hardware as Sony sees PS5 demand ahead of the launch. This may seem to indicate that the PS5 is set to continue the Sony versus Microsoft trend as the PS4 also outsold the Xbox One. Gaming has been a rare business winner during the global health crisis and that's good news for Sony as it prepares to launch a new console. The Japanese firm said it has seen very considerable demand for its upcoming PlayStation 5. It pre-sold as many PS5 consoles in the first 12 hours in the US as in the first 12 weeks of its predecessor, the PlayStation 4. The PS5 launch comes with many buyers staying at home due to the health crisis. While that has helped boost console makers, it's also disrupted key parts of the gaming industry, including manufacturing supply chains. Ryan said it's likely that not everybody who wants to buy a PS5 on launch day will be able to find one, but he said the company is working to ensure supply for the important year-end shopping season. The PS5 is expected to be the first next-generation device not to push the gaming division to an annual loss in its launch year. It's due to come out on November 12th. The console update comes as Sony reported a surprise jump in quarterly earnings on Wednesday. Profit between July and September reached $3 billion, up almost 14% from a year before and well ahead of analyst forecasts. The tech giant also raised its annual profit forecast to around $7 billion. Sony shares are up 47% from their March lows and climbed another 1.8% on Wednesday. And finally tonight, Jon Stewart is heading back to television. The former host of uh, Comedy Central's The Daily Show will host a current affairs series for Apple TV+. Plus. Former Daily Show host Jon Stewart will be returning to television on Apple's video streaming service, Apple TV. The company announced Tuesday Stewart will host and produce a current affairs series for Apple TV+. Plus a subscription-based app that competes with companies like Netflix and Disney+. This will be Stewart's first regular TV gig since his Emmy award-winning comedy talk show ended in 2015. Apple hasn't announced the show's title or when it will air, but the company said each episode will be an hour. The show will cover daily news topics alongside Stewart's advocacy work, which has included better health care access for wounded veterans and first responders in the 9-11 attacks. Congress should be down here answering their questions. Apple also announced a new podcast to accompany the show. Stewart's irreverent brand of political satire launched him into the spotlight when The Daily Show first aired in the late 1990s. The Comedy Central series reached a nightly audience of over two million people. Since the show ended, Stewart has appeared occasionally on talk shows and this year wrote and directed a political comedy movie called Irresistible. Thank the good Lord that he's coming back to television. I really missed him. The Daily Show has never been the same after he left. Well, that is a part of your world tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back again tomorrow at the same time with another edition of World News. I'm Mahesh Johnny. Please do stay safe and good night. <laughs>